Hello, this is Susan Bonner, and we're working on creating animated GIFs for social media. This is my original animated GIF uh, that I had made for the uh, project that was dealing with the epic science content. So I'm taking these same assets and I'm uh, working them now for our social media animation uh, for social justice. So um, this is going to be like what we create um, in the end. I've uh, opened this file up in Chrome. Next, I'm going to show you guys how we're going to open up our file in After Effects. We've already prepped that file uh, for After Effects, and uh, this is what it looks like when you open up After Effects. Um, there's a couple different ways that you can bring in files and get ready. Um, you can make a new composition or new composition from footage. I just want to show you guys kind of the, the regular setup. What, we, what I want you guys to do is uh, go to Workspace and choose Standard. Um, standard is a good one. Some of you on uh, a smaller computer might want to use the small screen, but this, if you're set up the same way that I am, that will be good. So next I'm going to go to File, Import, File. <clears throat> and then I'm going to go to the location that I have it. And uh, I've got a folder. Uh, it's very important, I want to talk about this at this point, that at this point you have things in the correct folder. Otherwise, you will have uh, projects that will not link properly. So I'm going to grab the Photoshop file. The Photoshop file will come all in with the layers, I, so I don't need the layers separately. I really want it to just come in as the Photoshop file. Um, it's also uh, important that as you click on this, import as footage, this needs to say composition retain layer sizes. If you don't click re retain layer sizes, everything will come in at the center with the rotation point being the center point and everything will be all on top of each other and that won't be good. So um, if you're having that problem, come back to this and do composition retain layer sizes. We want to create a composition, not a sequence. Um, and now I'm ready to say open. Um, at this point, I don't have any editable layer styles, uh, but I do keep that um, there. You could consider merging layer styles, but for this particular project, that's not something that we did. Um, so at this point, I've got, you can see that all of these layers are actually coming in um, separately. So these are my text layers. I've got my Antarctica. Um, black is considered uh, clear in um, Photoshop, so that's one of the things to recognize um, as you're working with the files. Um, so there's my water. Uh, so, um, ready, getting ready to um, make this. It's my layers, and this is a piece of uh, composition. Um, and what I can do is I can double click that and what that does is it brings the what was my Photoshop file onto the stage and it shows me all of my layers. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger so I can see all my layers. <clears throat> the next thing I want to show you is um, how this is all set up in After Effects. So anything that was in my Photoshop file comes in with the the layer name. Um, so I do have a layer one, which I really um, recommend uh, not doing that. I also have a layer zero. That's probably my background. So these are things that are not helpful because if you do update it in in uh, Photoshop it, um, and you change the name here, um, it will not be accurate. So what I want to do at this point is kind of go back um, into my Photoshop file and make sure that I have uh, these names uh, correctly. So, Antarctica, and the other one that was a um, not named correctly was the layer zero, and I'm just gonna call that background. 
Okay, so now everything's ready. I also do not have folders. It's really important not to have folders for what we're doing right now because it's a simple animation and we wanna have it be so that um, the stuff doesn't come in as what is called pre-comps. So I'm gonna file, save this, I'm gonna minimize this, and I'm gonna close this one because um, I want to bring this in again. So I'm just gonna delete these. <clears throat> so um, you can click new composition from footage, go ahead and grab the Photoshop file. Remember that the footage needs to retain the layer sizes, say open. Um, I'm going to keep the editable layer styles and there we go. I'm going to double click on this and you can see that now these are named properly. Um, so that's an important thing as we start to work on our animation here in After Effects. Now um, another thing I want to work on with you is the, the file size. I have this file set to be 1920 by 1920 and that's because I'm going to do some enlargements on some of the assets right in here, like Antarctica is going to do a shrink. So I'm going to um, work on that uh, to make sure that um, it shrinks down. Uh, but my stage, I want it to be, uh, I believe it's 640 by 640. I'm going to pause my recording to check. Okay, so I'm working uh, in uh, to try to find the uh, size and yes, indeed, we're doing 640 by 640 at 72 dpi at 10 frames per second because it's an animated GIF. We're really trying to get the file to be under two megabytes in uh, size. So we're really um, not gonna do things like zooms and pans. Uh, so those are some of the limitations. Okay, so with 640 by 640 at uh, 72 dpi and 10 frames per second, I wanna go into composition and check out the composition settings. Uh, and this would have brought it in at 1920 by 1920. So um, what I'm gonna do is say okay, and I'm going to um, Command Z on this. And instead of bringing it in where it just gets it from the footage, you can go to new composition um, and set it up to be 640 by 640. I could have locked that to not have to double click that. Um, and the frame rate is going to be 10 uh, frames per second. Background color is black. Um, that actually allows it to be um, clear uh, if we wanted to export a PNG sequence uh, resolution. Um, can be at full, and uh, just to check some of these other elements, uh, none of those things need to be altered at this point. Um, and I'm good to go. So just remember that we're doing 640 by 640 at 10 frames per second. I'm gonna say okay. This gives me that square that we're going for. And uh, now I'm going to go to File, Import, File. And I'm gonna grab that Photoshop file and remember to do the retain layer sizes. I'm gonna say okay. Uh, I'm gonna say okay there. And now with this set to be my stage, I can now bring in this file right here and you can see that it's larger and that's okay, that's what I want. Um, there's no animation set in it. I can arrow this down. Um, I can double click on this and inside of this, this is where all of my content is. Um, so things will um, be good. I can move things on and off stage. This is um, my penguin. I do have his head and other elements. Um, but because I know that I'm going to do some enlargements on this, um, at this point, because I know that I've got it to be, um, uh, I'm, I've set it up to be the small file inside of here. So if I double click on here, um, and then I will zoom out quite a bit, and that helps me to see my uh, file setup. 
and then I'm going to change the size by Okay, so what you'll have to do to transform the file um, to make it kind of fit into the stage, uh, if you're planning on doing any scaling at all, is to um, arrow down. You'll have it like this. You'll have to arrow down and then arrow down the transform and then go to the scale and you can scrub until it starts to fit. You can also move. Uh, by clicking the arrow tool and getting everything in there and come back down to scale um, and work with it that way. I can zoom back in and uh, play with the scale until I have it accurate for what I want. And I'm going to be moving things and, and working with um, quite a bit of scaling. so. Um, I'm going to leave it just like that at this point. Um, my next step is to um, go into the actual uh, composition, which is right here, um, knowing that I can um, export it out as that scaled image now. I can play with these assets and make them larger. Um, so that's going to be um, part of my first step. I'm going to just make this larger and you do have to hold shift down uh, to work with it. So I'm going to make my water all quite large. Um, I just hit return. That means that I go into this layer. Um, that is uh, not what I want. I want to click back. So it's like animate if you're used to working in animate in that way. Um, Okay, so that's a little piece about scaling. Um, this is my timeline. This is my stage uh, effects and presets. This is where my comps live. And uh, I'm going to uh, start to work on animating this character and also teaching you guys um, some basics of how to move things in, work on parenting, and uh, turn things on and off. So um, the first thing that I want to do is actually talk about parenting, because if you have a character that has um, uh, anything that is going to animate inside of it, let's see, this guy, Penguin Infographic, that's actually his main base, um, and then his left arm and his right arm and his big head. So these, these are my main um, components that I'm going to work on parenting. This layer that's called infographic-f. It is the um, main element. So what you want to do is actually work on parenting these assets to each other. So this is one way to do it where you can get the right arm and you click on that swirly and you drag it to uh, the, the base of the body. Um, I can do that with each one. Or you can click here where it says none and uh, find the layer that you want to bring it to. Um, so why do I want to do that? Let's actually Command Z that a couple times. Um, when you move this asset, it's leaving behind all his head and everything, so that's not so good. So the reason why we um, work on these parenting um, elements is if I bring this down into it, now, if I move him, he's moving everything, so that, that's a really nice way to work. Um, so I do know that that's what I want to parent. Um, the next thing I'd like to do is to um, work on my animation plan. So I'm going to, um, uh, at this point, um, drag him off stage because he's not going to be on stage for the beginning of my animation. And um, the next thing that I'm going to do is work on getting Antarctica fully in that image um, and turning the layers off that I don't want to have. So here's Antarctica. I'm going to start with the huddle of penguins. And um, so this one is off. That's the line that I was showing you previously. So here's my huddle. Here's my three run. Um, instead of turning them off, because that won't work in the animation, I want you to arrow down and kind of show that. Um, 
you're going to, um, if it's happening in the beginning, you're going to pull it down the timeline. And then if you pull the timeline, um, the Penguin 3 run will show up um, later in the timeline. So that functions well in that way. The other thing that you can do, and I'm going to show you with, let's go with this one, is you can arrow these down, arrow down the transform, and go to the opacity and uh, make this at zero opacity. Uh, so if I click on, it goes away completely, and then I'll kind of go to a place where I know that I'm going to have it and click on the timer. So clicking the timer is important. It creates a keyframe for you. And then I'm going to make it 100% opacity. So you can see that now it's going on and off. Um, so that there's two different ways to bring um, the assets on and off. Uh, you can only do this one where you bring it um, the the purple line over if it's being it's if it's being done at the beginning. Okay, so um, that is something to consider. Um, penguin jump up. That is this little guy. And so he's at 100% there. And then here, I've got him at zero. I got to make him at 0% opacity. So he goes away. So the other thing that I need to do is make sure that this, at this point, if I change this here, he's on and then he's off. So what is happening is doing this transformation. So what, uh, like a gradient, um, a transition. So what you have to do is work with your, um, uh, you have to see this very close. Uh, so we have to go to these mountains and bring this really close. So you can see that when I was uh, far away, I was not keyframe per keyframe. So I'm going to go to this. That is one keyframe before it. And I'm going to take this opacity instead of being 3%. And we can watch that opacity kind of change as we move along. I need this one to be 100% opacity. So now when it goes this is all the way on because it's going from 100 to 100 and then gets turned off to 0% opacity. And that's how I turn things on and off. I'm going to bring these mountains back so I can see the timeline a little bit smaller. And you can see that I've got two keyframes right next to each other. Um, but often you'll need to bring these mountains bigger so that you can um, see uh, closer in. Okay, so um, that's a little bit about turning things on and off. Um, I'm going to zoom out, hitting Z, and then holding down Option. Uh, in Antica, Antarctica, social distancing is not caused by a virus. This is a little comment on uh, global climate change. Okay, so how do we move things? Uh, one thing that I would recommend for moving is let's get the... Um, this is our character that I'm planning on moving. Um, so I'm going to arrow down and then arrow down the transform. Um, and remember that he's everything on and is parented. So um, if he's at this position right here, and then I'll go down the timeline to like right here, um, and then grab his base, he will jump into that. So um, but you can see that he actually didn't jump into it. He's just now at that location. So I'm going to Command-Z this. I'm going to turn the timer on on the position. So that kind of locks his position at that point in the timeline. I can move these um, uh, keyframes over. So that's locked at that place. Now if I want to have him come in and move to this location, I'll move him. And you can see that when I do that, it creates a, um, a path. So now you can see that he goes to that location. Um, this is uh, can be altered. You can kind of come in and kind of flow. He's going to move along that path. Um, and I can work on uh, uh, making it ease in and ease out later. But right now, in this very beginning, I'm just going to um, make it 
uh, just kind of set up according to my animation plan. Okay, so um, the next thing I want to show you guys, oops, uh, I just changed my work area, workspace, um, and I'm going to go back to standard, and that should jump in. Okay, so um, I want to show you guys about a couple of things. If I hit U, that's the Uber button, uh, we call it, and that helps me to see that this is the position that's changing. Um, when I scrub my timeline, I can kind of control the speed, but it's not really going to go that fast. This preview section is how fast it's going, and it's going dreadfully slow. So I really want to take this keyframe here and move it closer, um, and then I'll test it and hit preview. And that's a lot better. Um, I have this rotation keyframe. I'm going to just delete that because I'm getting confused by that. Um, so I'll take that over. Um, he's jumping in there a lot faster, so it's more of like a, a quick appearance. I'm going to bring it in even faster and see how that goes. So hitting play, nice. Okay, so that's kind of how fast I, and kind of zippy I want my assets to go. It looks like I'm going to about 23 seconds on this one, this animation. I can always add more later, but um, to the time. And uh, for the animation, uh, projects that you guys are doing, I'm, I'm thinking probably about 30 seconds to 60 seconds um, will be good for what you guys are doing for the uh, social media animated GIFs. Um, okay, so let's talk about once this character is in location, um, doing some more things. Um, we've talked about turning things on and off um, uh, previously, but I want to get all of my assets to be um, in their right location. So this won't be changing it in time. I'm just kind of giving more um, space for these things. So I'm going to um, hold down shift and make these bigger. Um, so that's my huddle. Um, I don't have to hit return. Um, and then I'm going to um, find the other ones, which is the three run. Um, if I go to that, I believe that's the one that I showed you guys how to turn on and off. Um, and so, ooh, the opacity is at 100. It must be, I'm going to have to turn off that huddle because I believe it's actually behind there right now. So, the three run, where are you, little three run? Oh, that's because this purple line is to there. So I'm going to actually bring this to here now. Um, and take these three runs, and I, I think that scale will be pretty good. Of course, it's going to be um, generally bigger, um, but the three runs shouldn't be on top of the huddle. It needs to be behind it. Okay. Um, so I'm going to have these little guys uh, jumping off. These ones should not be showing at this point. They're going to come later, and so are these. So these ones can come later. So you can kind of see timing-wise how that's they're starting to appear. Um, so kind of getting my timeline running, um, I want to take this guy from this location to this location. So what I'm going to do is arrow this down, and it is the position that I'm going to start to do. So I'm going to turn that timer on. And then I'm going to position him from here to when I come in this part of the timeline, um, I'm going to bring him to here, plus rotate it. So I'm going to go to that rotation and turn on rotation and get him to go to there. So because I didn't turn on rotation first, Command-Z, um, I need to go to this location. I'm going to go in the timeline to right here, and um, you can control click and new. I'm looking for a new keyframe, but I don't think that is um, the option, so I'm going to click. Oh, keyframe here. You can click on this button, which is that little diamond later, to make a new keyframe. So, see this? We'll make a new keyframe. Okay, so rotation, um, that 
line item um, is there, and I'm going to rotate him to be maybe like this here, and then he'll rotate to this here. See how he's now flowing. So that's the goal with these um, little penguins as they're flying off. Of course, penguins don't fly, but they can jump off. Um, so now that I've got this one, um, I will, it should not be there in space, so uh, that's the penguin jump down because those arms are down. So I'm going to open up all these arrows and uh, take him um, actually in the timeline. He should show up right, right here. So because it's the first time that he does anything, I can do that right there. So now um, I'm going to change to this, which means at the um, these the penguin jump up needs to disappear and become 0% opacity. I could either pull all of that over, but I might have to show him again, so I'm going to um, bring that again. So uh, bring the uh, opacity to 0%. So let me turn off the... So I need the penguin jump up to be at... 0% opacity, just trying to understand this. He looks like he is at 0% already, so I'm, I'm good there. So next thing that I have to do is uh, take the one that's jumping down and then do run kind of the same kind of thing, where I'm going to take, I'm going to turn on the position timeline, because this is where he first starts, and then to right about here, this is going to be his new new position, and then hit. Um, so now, if I move uh, back in time, I've got that. In addition to turning on rotation, so that's the first time. And then when he gets to here, he's going to rotate. You can hit um, R or also grab that. So he's now doing his dive. Right, so now I've got two assets that created a, a, a real flow. Um, so that's that. Um, let's see what that looks like. Okay. So I'm pleased with that. I'm going to hit the U button again, um, the Uber button, to kind of open things, things up. Um, if you click off all the way, hitting V, and then click off all the way, you'll be able to... Um, get everything to close or everything to open. Do you see how that functions? And that's kind of nice. So the U button is the way to open things up or uh, close things down. Okay, so we're starting to get an animation running here. Um, the, the thing that I want to do is to make it feel like this um, Antarctica is going to shrink by the time that this guy has to jump off. So, um, they're going to, Antarctica is going to get to this. So, I'm going to arrow this down, and I'm going to go to Transform. I'm going to go to Scale. I'm going to turn that on right there. And I'm going to also add a keyframe right here. And the scale, by the time I get to this, if I air, take my mouse and kind of push it to that, that will really kind of force the penguins off of the island, right? And then that one jumps. So it's kind of like um, just getting too crowded for everybody. Um, all right, so that's kind of um, running a, a, an animation with a sequence of images coming out of Photoshop. Um, I will save because we did something good, so make sure that you save your, your file. Um, when you save your file, it's very important that you save things in the, uh, the folder where you're in, intending it for, all, for it to always live. So I'm going to do, call this penguin, um, and dark, 
to call After Effects. I'm going to call this demo because it's my demo file for you guys. And I'll hit save. AEP is the After Effects file. I uh, will just save that like that. Okay, so we're getting there. Uh, the next thing that I want to show you guys is Puppet Warp. So in order, um, the reason why I would do that is if if I wanted to get him to wave goodbye, um, but not have the rotation be just like up and down and up and down. So let's see. Let's find this uh, penguin character. Okay. Um, and if I, so it's actually his left arm. And I'm going to open that up and open that up and go to position and turn on the timer, uh, grab the rotation point. So when we were in Photoshop, we could take that rotation point and spin it, right? And that's how we tested to see if um, what that was going to be like. So I hit Command T and I took this and I um, spun it. You can't control it like that in after Effects um, command period. So what you have to do is you you click on it, you find the the asset, and then you're going to go to this pan behind anchor point tool. Why is the shortcut for it? It's next to the arrow tool or the um, camera tool. So you're going to click on that. That enables you to move the location of the anchor point tool. Then you can rotate and get the, the asset to rotate. You do have to be on the asset in order to rotate it, otherwise it doesn't do it. So, um, oops, I just double clicked. When that happens, um, just go back. Okay, so there's your big arm, um, and I've got, I just want to get it rotating. So this is the first section. I'm going to turn on rotation timer. Um, and then this is the second rotation. Oops, I need to go down the timeline. So you start with what you want first, and then this has a new keyframe, so it's able to move. So you can see he's moving. Bye-bye. Um, so this is an idea of how to get that to just move kind of simply. And some of you will just be able to have it move simply, but some of you will want to have things move in a little bit more. I do see that I have a little bit of a gap and an issue here when I move it and it feels kind of broken. So I need to actually go and paint this this in. So um, this is a shortcut for that. Um, it's E for elephant, or at least it was in the old Photoshop. Um, so uh, the old After Effects. So at this time I'm going to Go into here, his left big arm. I'm going to um, draw a um, little bit more information for that. I'm gonna, in order to see this, I'm going to bring this to here. OK, so B for brush. Um, I'm going to add a little bit more to that big left arm. B for brush. I was um, using pencil previously, so I want to actually use the brush tool. Um, set to uh, Bonner Cleanup Brush. And I'm using my trackpad now, so wish me luck. Um, um, turn off his head and make sure that we like this. E for eraser. B for brush. Just kind of cleaning that up. Okay. Um, now I just want to make sure that I take this and bring this to 100%. I'll save it. So once I save it, as soon as I save it, it's going to be able to fix this that's in there. Um, it's going to um, redo this link. You can see that it's been, it's been altered. Um, because I've moved it, it, it kind of has a little bit of an issue still. Um, but what I'd like to do then is take its position um, and V, um, grab it and just kind of put it in, and then take this position. Right, so it's actually at this point, oh, it's got a little bit of a floating. Um, let's 
So what I can do is I can delete that one and right, so now I'm going to delete this one too and just start it over. Now it won't do its floating thing, although it still is. Oh, that's I'm in the wrong layer, so um, zoom out because I think I deleted his movement altogether. So edit uh, history. Okay, so what I want to show you is that this is kind of looking like it's ending up breaking. Some of yours will not do that, um, but in this case I would really like to get it to be a little bit more fluid. So you can do this with faint, with flags or anything that's really fluid. Um, uh, what I'm going to do is called puppet warp. So I'm going to keep it here and then um, I'm going to actually delete this uh, this movement on the left arm, the rotation. So I'm going to delete that keyframe. So now there won't be any rotation. The next thing that I'm going to do is go to this pin tool. So the pin tool, um, when I click it, I'm going to click on make an anchor point, and then one more point, and then a third point. These points, having them in order, is important to me to be able to know um, what they are, where they're going to be. So if I arrow down on my arm itself inside of effects, um, there's a puppet, and then inside of mesh, there's a deform, and then there's all these pins. So it's really important to be able to arrow down all of these and being able to um, see how they function. So um, further down the timeline, I'm going to go to here so you can see that these are where my pins are. That's my anchoring of them. And this, now I'm going to move. And this one I'm going to move a little bit too, uh, but I'm going to kind of like let it be flowy. So you can see how he's kind of taking his arm out and he's like, go, 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 go. Um, so that's pretty cute and kind of fun. So that's uh, puppet warping. Um, if I need to get this keyframe up there to fix my brokenness, I can kind of actually come up and bring that up there. So I think that that will function better. Let me click off so that we can see that and kind of test how that is. Um, I'm going to uh, go to that puppet pin that is the puppet pin one. It really should be this one. Um, and try to get that to match up a little bit. Um, hard to see if I'm not um, kind of zoomed in at that brokenness, but um, something like that would do pretty good. Okay, so um, that is a quick uh, look at Puppet Warp. I do want to, while I'm in here um, with Puppet Warp, show you guys uh, how uh, you can uh, you can get too many pins for sure, so don't do too many, just think about it like that. And then uh, if I click on that, on one of the pins, um, and I click on that, I you can, there's a lot more advanced stuff that you can do with it, but um, the mesh is important to be able to see. Um, for me, the expansion is set to 13. That tends to work. That's this mesh that's um, coming around it. So if I click on a pin again, I can, I can see it. <clears throat> um, so showing the mesh is important. Uh, when the mesh is too, uh, inside of it, it's going to break it. So don't do that. Um, it needs to not be negative for sure. But sometimes when it's very tight, like set to um, three or two, um, that doesn't work. So I, I tend to like um, something in the 10 range. Um, also, you can play with the density um, of triangles. Now this is way extreme, um, way too much detail. Um, so if you the the less density that you have uh, the better um, for um, being able to work with a file um, so if I want to go here and then kind of like um, push it that way you can see how he's kind of really able to move his um, flipper and I can do that same kind of thing with this other flipper over there uh, but basically that is pretty cool uh, you can also do um, even more advanced. You can record um, and uh, 
do that, but I'll we can get into that in the advanced motion graphics class. Okay. Um, so the next thing that I wanted to show you after Puppet Warp and Pins is um, playing with this timeline. Um, really, uh, at this point, it's good to run a play and, and test it and see how it's functioning. Um, whoa, that's too slow, right? So um, again, uh, with this all opened up, I'm going to grab these keyframes and move them closer. So now I'm going to click it to here, hit play. Right, so maybe to get this to function. Anytime that I click off, I get to deselect the keyframes, and then when I um, click on it, I'm selecting it. So let's test that out. I want it to be um, a little bit of an interesting rhythm. Yeah. Um, so I can also take those um, puppet pins, which is all the way to here, and copy them. Copy. And then, uh, so Command C, and then paste them. So now he can wave multiple times. So no need to make um, a little loop. I've just kind of created a copy. Come on, come on, guys. Um, and we'll paste it again. And maybe have him pause a second and then paste it again. So now I'll hit play. Come on, come on. Come on. So I do want a little bit more pause in between those two. So bring that over and then we'll hit play again and All right so um, you can see how that that can function really nicely that's called the puppet warp um, but make sure that you're arrowing down your um, effects or puppets in your mesh all of that to be able to see them um, if you're way deep inside of here and you're like, where's all my layers? Remember that you can click off, you can hit the U button that will start to see where your keyframes are. Um, it's good to work in these kind of rows. Um, hit U again and get rid of that. Click up here and um, hit U to um, kind of jump out. Um, sometimes I guess it's not really functioning for me, but here I am. Um, so uh, I've done a good thing, so we're going to save. Make sure that you save very frequently. Um, the next thing that I want to show you, since we've kind of showed you everything that you need to know for, like with it, with all of this, you really can function and create um, everything. I've shown you uh, scale, on and off, rotating, puppet warp, and pins, and moving. Uh, with this, these few techniques, you guys are going to be able to uh, really create um, uh, entire thing. You can uh, turn on and off your different text if you need, things like that. So next I'm going to um, show you guys how to export. So first we're going to save and go to uh, export, add to render queue. And the exporting, uh, there's a lot of options here. Lossless is a good file for when we're going to make a um, movie file. Um, you want to think about getting the first thing that I do is output to, and I this is where it's going to go to. This is the movie file, which is QuickTime movie file. Um, this is something that you can uh, do to make it kind of uh, a quick uh, test, um, and then you would hit render, um, and this blue bar will run across this whole thing, and my animation only goes to there. I could create a work area and kind of only have it do the work area, but right now I'm just testing the whole thing. Um, that is a move. All right, so we're going to uh, render our After Effects file and uh, work on making a PNG sequence to uh, make it into an animated GIF. So what you do is composition, add to render queue, and then you click on this lossless section. Um, if, if you don't get this right away, uh, you can hit custom, which is uh, what I had to do um, in order to, to get this, this uh, window to come up. Um, so hitting custom gets you that. Um, I'm going to, instead of choosing QuickTime, uh, we're going to do a PNG sequence, okay? 
uh, video output RGB is good. Uh, we are going to resize my particular file because I left mine at 1920 by 1920. So we're going to make ours 640 by 640. Um, and let's go into format options uh, and check out the compression. No compression is good for what we're doing. And uh, the other thing that we want to check out is color management. I want you to always check preserve RGB. This is pretty important so things stay consistent. Uh, and uh, no cropping is necessary. So PNG sequence RGB uh, resized if we needed it to 640 by 640. Okay, um, so we've got a PNG sequence. I'm going to out click on this output to, uh, and I'm going to make a new folder and call it Penguin PNG sequence because that is going to make like 29,000 <laughs> different files if I don't click on PNG sequence, like make it into a folder. Um, so it's going to number itself, which is going to be fantastic. Um, I could have just clicked save in a subfolder, but I've actually made the folder specific to myself there. And there we go. I'm going to hit save. Um, saving does not actually make the sequence. So this is just telling you where it's going to go to. And this tells you what it's going to be making. So I need to now hit render. By rendering, this blue bar is going to come across the edge. And when I am done with that, it looks to say bling. Um, and it looks like since I had multiple renders, it's going to make more. OK, there we go. Um, so now I've got those renders. I'm going to check out what they look like in my file folder here. Um, so I've got a PNG sequence. It starts, interesting that it starts with four. I'm going to make sure this says uh, name. It goes by name. And I wanted to go the name the other way. So it, it does, for some reason, start with four. I wonder if I pushed it over or something. Um, I think it will be fine in my case. Um, the next thing to do is open up Photoshop. Uh, and uh, open your file in Photoshop. And go to the file folder and choose the first number in the sequence and check the box that says image sequence. So. Um, File, open, uh, find the location, and find that PNG image sequence. Click on the first uh, image in that sequence. And for me, it's 04. Yours is probably going to be 01. Uh, I'm going to click image sequence. Very important to do that. And then say open. And uh, we're doing a frame rate of 10 because we're going to make an animated GIF. So we're going to say OK to that. Um, it does have this movie slider thing. So next, I'm going to um, uh, go to the window and open up the timeline. This helps me to just see that I have a um, I have it on another window. Let me just bring it in here. This helps me to see that I have an animation. I'm going to make this timeline live right there. Or maybe not. <laughs> window. Timeline. There we are. OK. Um, so you can see the animation is, is running right there. And this is just kind of testing it at this point. I still don't have animation down there, but I've got that file. So um, I could actually edit it um, inside of Photoshop if I wanted to. Um, OK, so now I'm going to File, Export. Save for web, legacy. Instead of JPEG, we're going to hit GIF. I always like to have the two up. Uh, that helps me to uh, see 
uh, them side by side because you will get uh, banding or um, image issues if you're not careful um, with the, your color choice. Um, I'm going to make sure it says no dither. Um, we could play with the colors to push the colors down and that will help re reduce the file size. Right now um, my file size is 286k and that's fantastic. I could try to go to 32 colors and that takes me down to 191k and for my particular file right now without the beak on there um, that is actually functioning just fine. Um, so what you would do is make sure that you have forever looping and then you can hit play and you can kind of test this file right here. Um, don't worry that it's too slow here in the Photoshop preview. Um, just testing to see if it is actually animating. Um, there are other uh, methods that you can choose besides this if yours is looking kind of janky. Um, uh, I would just recommend for you to play with those uh, different uh, methods. Um, some may work better for you. Uh, than others, um, so it just depends on what, what you need. Um, I'm going to go with adaptive for mine. Make sure you don't have transparency on and um, uh, just kind of test it right here to see if it plays. So then I'm going to hit save and I'm going to call this um, penguin uh, social distance and put it into the right folder and so now I have penguin social distance dot gif uh, please make sure that you have your first and last name on these files and so I'll do that and then hit save great uh, my next step is to go find that gif and drag it into chrome or any of your internet browsers uh, my internet browser is on the other window, so I'm going to go and grab it and drag it over here to you guys. Oh, that looks different, and that's just because this is actually the wrong animated GIF. <laughs> this is the one that I had initially done, um, so you can kind of see what that looks like, but uh, I want this one. So you can control click, you can open with Chrome or whatever you're using. This is my new one. Um, so you want to test this and make sure that everything is edging out really nicely, uh, and uh, that is that it also is is looping. Um, I do have a pause in there, uh, but it, I do see that it's looping because this is the second round uh, that it's going by. So test your gifts, make sure they loop, uh, and that is exporting and. Uh, saving your file out as an animated GIF.